in the courtroom today. My friend shot me in the back with a bow and arrow, and now he needs to pay. This whole thing was just an accident, and he should have had insurance. You know the party's over when someone gets shot with a bow and arrow. Gas station attendant Jimmy Terry is suing his former friend for medical bills. Defendant Stephen Moore says it was an accident. Now, here's Judge Joe Brown. Plaintiff alleges that the defendant in this cause, known well to him, is responsible for certain injuries that were suffered at his hands. Where'd all this happen? This actually happened at the defendant's house. I take it everyone had been consuming a bit of beer. And what were you playing? We were actually playing catchphrase. All right. Now, the discussion got interesting. There was a hypothetical, I understand, that developed when the discussion turned around to the father of one of the young men assembled, and they started joking about his paranoia relative to the U.S. getting invaded by the communists, right? Yes, sir. So I take it he's sort of a survivalist type. Uh, somewhat, yes. Yes, all right. Now, most of you guys started joking about this, laughing, but one of you seems to have gotten a little bit disturbed by this talk of communist invasion. Would you tell me about that? Sure would. Um, on the, uh, the early morning, I'd say around 2 o'clock, September 13th, um, we, uh, you know, we've been drinking, playing board games and whatnot, and, um, well, we, uh, I went outside. I was actually going to walk down to my mom's house to go home. Um, I was pretty tired. And uh, I was followed by my witness here, Jared. Um, and uh, we started, you know, we just started talking. And eventually the conversation led into our big inside joke, which is basically, we call it the revolution. It's, um, it's basically the, uh, the idea that one day communists will come to overthrow America. And our goal as citizens of America is to overthrow the terrorists and restore democracy to America. That's our goal for the most part. Yeah. And, um, we started joking about uh, the defendant here, Stephen. Um, see, he's always been the type of guy who was big on kind of, he, he has the idea that he's going to be able to retire in a year. He's big into like stock market and real estate, which isn't an, a bad thing to be into. But for a guy who ain't worked in four months, it's horrible. So um, <laughs> basically we started talking about how when the communists get here, he's probably going to be like, oh, we should do real estate and stock market. And Jerry was like, oh, he probably would. So we got back inside. I was going to joke with him a little bit. And he, um, I was like, Stephen, you know, when the revolution finally gets here, you can't be talking about the stock market and, you know, real estate. He's like, oh, well, don't worry about it. I got guns and weapons. I was like, well, good, because we're going to need them. Because the communists are coming, and we're going to take them down. And he was like, I got this. I got a bow and arrow. I was like, look. Dude. Realistically, you can't use a bow and arrow against fully automatic weapons. And if or could, tanks, bombs, exactly. grenades, artillery, but he, whatever. But he assured me that he could do this. And I was like, no, nah, no, you can't. And I didn't really think anything else of it. And I kept talking to everybody else who was there. And um, I'd say about a minute and a half, two minutes later, I'm, uh, I'm standing in the kitchen. I look out of the corner of my eye, and I see the defendant with a 40-pound compound bow, fully drawn back with his hand shaking. And then before I could really utter anything out of my mouth, I see the bow and arrow just like, I see the bow just wiggling out of my back. And I'm like, You mean the arrow? The arrow, yeah. I was like, You shot me. <laughs> <laughs> you shot me with the bow and arrow. Who? You shot me. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much all I could say was, You shot me. And, um, and he walks up to me. And, um, being the genius that he is, he rips the bow out of my back. The, a the arrow. The arrow, the arrow. He rips the arrow out of my back. And uh, it's a broadhead tip, so you know it's got the little Yeah, I believe tip. I have the offending projectile up here. Yes. This item, an the eastern arrow, <laughs> lightweight. That's, that's not the tip that... Uh, well, similar. It similar, may not yes. be. I, I, I'll, I'll see what we had. You can now. describe what you had. Let's see. That's the arrow. Oh, yes. You're lucky, by the way. He says in his answer... As he was swaying when the arrow was released, it ricocheted off of a cabinet, which is why you didn't get completely penetrated. Have you I ever still got shot. Yeah, but have you ever? <laughs> yeah, but you're lucky. Now that's not the end of it. No. He no, snatched no. the broadhead arrow out of you, which probably did more damage coming out than it did going in. That's what the doctor said. And then you did what the deer do. They get shot and they run for 50 to 150 yards before they pile up, bled out. That's about where I went. 
but you <laughs> didn't go 150 yards running. You went someplace. But tell me what happened before you went to your mother's house. Okay, after after. What did he shot? else do to you when you wouldn't shut up? <laughs> okay, I was. Uh, I guess I was very vocal in my amount of pain that I was feeling. I take time. it. So um, Stephen decided, I guess, the defendant, that it was a it was a good idea to uh, quiet me down by choking me. <laughs> so um. So he proceeded to wrap his hands around my neck and push me against the wall in the kitchen. Now, one of the people there... Um, Shot you and there. ran over to choke you. Yeah. So he, I think he was going for murder, but I don't really know what happened along the way. No, a jury might have looked at it that way, said he went off a little bit, and they might have been talking about uh, homicide committed in the heat of passion. That might have been good enough to get a second-degree murder going, or at least voluntary manslaughter. Anyway, you manage to escape his fell clutches, and then we yes. get the deer run, but we go to Mama's. What do you do when you get to Mama's? I ran down to my mom's house, and uh, I... Uh, I take it that you removed the mattress, box springs to get to the bed slats? Yes, 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 I was going to get that. You out. retrieved a bed slat, and then you returned, or attempted to return to the scene. The bed rail got heavy, so I, I just dropped it. I was calling out for him, basically. I was asking him to meet me in the middle oh, of the street. So breathing, he uh, bleeding pretty heavy. You know? Yeah, yeah, I was bleeding. I'd had a little blood loss, a little shock setting in at that point. So you go to the emergency room? Yes, I did. Out a medical bill? Yes, I got it right. Let me see that. Hmm. About what I thought. They didn't mind addressing disinfectant stuff, antibiotics. Okay. Man, well, you're lucky. One dollar nine hundred fifty-six dollars and seventy-seven cents. Is this the only one you have? Uh, I actually have two more bills that's supposed to be coming. What are those I, for? Um, one's for radiology. It's for two chest views because they did two chest X-rays. They wanted to make sure I didn't puncture my lung. And the other one is for the emergency room physicians. We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. We shot the ballistic gelatin, uh, tested the air only one, one time, and uh, happened to fortunately hit the center. We seemed to have gotten about eight inches of penetration in the ballistic gelatin. It didn't completely pass all the way through. It's Joe. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says he was injured after a game called catchphrase turned into a debate with the defendant. He says the defendant shot him with a bow and arrow, then ripped it out of his body. Let's take a look. What do you have to say for yourself? Um, I had an extreme lack of judgment, uh, drinking too much, and uh, went out and playing with something I shouldn't have been playing with. You pulled off a Dick Cheney with a bow and arrow. <laughs> that is funny. That is great at humor right there. So to speak, yes. Funny. What possessed you? You do not handle a deadly weapon when you are intoxicated. You do not aim said deadly weapon, which you did with not this eastern arrow, but a similar device. Go to full draw, even <laughs> though it's a compound where the draw weight drops off after you've pulled it. And then you compounded it by running up and yanking it out of him. And then even the way you put it, you were trying to get him to stop making such a loud disturbance, so you were trying to settle him down. So you say you shoved him on the wall. I, I had actually I had a um, some paper towels on putting pressure on the wound. Yes, was, but was. that's back. You also tried to put pressure on his mouth. You say <laughs> to keep him quiet, and you seem to have gotten upset by the preposterous proposition they were putting to you just to pull your leg. What's wrong with you? There's not much Good I can say. you didn't have an apple to put on your head. Oh, yeah. The way you comported yourself, I wouldn't reach you along with William Tell. Speaking of such, I think we have somebody here to speak to that. Let's see. Mr. Rabska. Is that how you pronounce it? Would you yes, come sir. up here, That's your please? Honor. All right, Mr. Don Rabska. Saw you out there in the video adjusting the knock point and tuning the bow up 
Did you happen to take the bow in question? I believe we have it over there. Madam Sonia, would you pass that item up to the witness? It's on a stand. All right. What do we have there? We have a vintage Darton bow. I'd say it's close to 20 years old. It's still the old round wheel technology, which I think... Not uh, the elliptical one. Sorry. Exactly. I also even uh, weighed the bow. It was 58.3 pounds at peak weight and 26.1 pounds at holding weight. Now, I understand you went out and test fired this. Yes, Your Honor, I did. What did you observe? That um, the bow is, again, it's old technology. It it's, uh, shoots pretty rough, but I was able to tune it in and uh, dial in the broadhead. Uh, now, broadhead old dial. technology, that's a heck of a lot newer than what the English longbow <laughs> was, wasn't it? That did everybody yes, in. So, I mean, it would do the job, wouldn't it? It will certainly do the job. What Very kind of job effective could tool. you do with it? Well, that arrow should have probably penetrated all the way through his body had it not, first of all, skipped off the cabinet and also squandered a lot of energy by impacting most likely sideways rather than all the energy directly behind the arrow. See, that's what I thought. If you looked at the wound also when I saw it, it was all jagged sideways. So I, when he pulled it out, if you pull it out straight, I think it, when it hit it, it was kicking so much sideways that that's where he squandered so much energy and ended up not breaking through the bone and penetrating through his body. <laughs> What did you find? Well, we shot the ballistic gelatin, uh, tested the arrow only one, one time, and uh, happened to fortunately hit the center. We seem to have gotten about eight inches of penetration on the ballistic gelatin. It didn't completely pass all the way through, but um, plenty enough to do the job. These guys out here don't know what they've got. That's a little bit tougher than the consistency of the human body. It seems to be, yes, sir. And as you can see, pulling it out seems to cause a lot more damage than to have left it alone. And yeah, so it tears when it comes out. Basically, what's on the head here are razor blades, old-time razor blades. Correct. What could you take down with that bow? How big an animal, game animal? You could certainly take down deer, probably even elk with a well-shot uh, or well-placed arrow. How much would an elk weigh, typical? Uh, about 800 pounds. So your conclusion is, but for the fact that the defendant accidentally stumbled and the released arrow hit the cabinet and hit the victim sideways, he probably would have been completely penetrated. That would be your conclusion, would it not? Yes, Your Honor, that's absolutely correct. All right, 58 plus pounds draw weight. We'll be back with more Judge Joe Brown in a moment. Quarterback. You know, he had this thing at full draw? Yeah, his hand was shaking and everything, and he had it aimed right at him. I, I didn't have it aimed at him. Well, if you didn't have it aimed at him, how'd you hit him with it? Closed captioning sponsored by... We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The defendant in this case says one drink too many clouded his judgment on the night in question. He says he immediately applied pressure on the wound he caused by shooting his friend with a bow and arrow. Let's take a look. What were you doing? I was just messing around. Didn't anybody teach you anything about the use of this thing? Yes, I did. What were you so worked up about? I actually, I, I wasn't worked up. It was just. What you know, was it? I don't know, sir. What would you call it? Stupidity. You know what bothers me about this whole thing? You've got this thing at full draw when drunkenly you stagger. I, I, and it sounds like from the witnesses you did a release while you were wavering and staggering, which fortunately resulted in one of these arrows hitting the cabinet. Now, that bothers me. Did you really intend to do him some harm? No, sir. Because he was ribbing you? No, sir. Not at all. What did you see, young man? Uh, pretty much what a... Uh, you know, Jimmy here just said, you know, just to tell you, I'm, right now I'm thinking he's a pretty big wacko. You know, it's not good because we live in the same house. But, uh... He's you know, related to you or are you a roommate? All right, he's my roommate. You just called him a wacko. Why? Well, he did shoot somebody with a bow and arrow. Did, well, did it look like it was an accident or just somebody in a drunken state doing something that he otherwise would not have done? What did you see? Tell me what you saw. Well, actually, I was standing right, like, 
right about as close as I am to him now when he got shot because I was about to, I was going outside to walk my dog. You know, it's about the time I turned around, Jimmy, you know, he just starts yelling. And then I see an arrow sticking out of his back, and Steven ran up to it and snatched it out of his back. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just pulled it back, you know. He had this thing at full draw? Yeah, his hand was shaking and everything, and he had it aimed right at him. I, I didn't have it aimed at him. Well, if you didn't have it aimed at him, how'd you hit him with it? It crossed him when I was, pull, when I was pulling it back. But it wasn't pointed at him, it was pointed off to the right. Right after I saw that the arrow had landed in my back, I, I, you know, I started to say, you shot me, you shot me. I looked at Steven and I said, you shot me. But what he said right after he shot me, and this is quote for quote, he said, I told you I'd do it. So I, I kind of got that impression. It looks like for some reason, uh, he was particularly sensitive to these issues, had something to prove, and he got a little out of it. Unfortunately, it miscarried. See, that young man is what bothers me about this. It looks like you completely lost it out there, and you had an intention to do him in. I'll show him. Yeah, let's see what they do with this. Everybody's, what the hell? You got it drawn full down. You can't focus the aim because you're too inebriated. When you release, it hits the cabinet. No, I knew, I knew better than to point the bow at him. That's why what I crawled, the devil crawled. do you think you did? This isn't like you come up and say. Hey, man, check it out. Look what I got, man. You know, hey, this will take. Man, check it. It'll do it. <laughs> they look up, and you are doing. And they see you ready to fire. That's like, yeah, man, I got something to handle this. Let him come up in here. I got something for you. No, you walk in behind everybody, they're looking that way, and they turn around, and you're drawing on them, and you know you're ready for Freddie, getting ready to pop the cap or look like it. What do you think's going on? And by the way, it takes 58 pounds plus to draw that to the break point, then it drops off. So you had to not just do something with a finger, a hand. You had to put 58 pounds of effort into it. Uh, you pull that back and assume the firing position. I think something's wrong with him. Yeah. So what are you asking? I'm asking for um, my medical bills to be paid and uh, pain and suffering. I'm not requesting the whole, the maximum, $5,000. Um, Why not? I don't really know, to be honest with you. Um, I figure if I was asking for the full 5000 I would just seem like somebody was trying to get a, a handout or whatnot. I mean, even though I was shot, I completely understand that. <laughs> But uh, I, I think, like, when I went, when I got home from the hospital, I got home at about 6 in the morning. I laid in my bed for about two hours. And um, I got to thinking about uh, the defendant, and um, I was like, my little brother, he's been in and out of jail a lot. And, um, and that's seen... why you didn't turn him in, because you thought about what had happened with your little brother, and you didn't want that to happen to him. You put that in your complaint. Yes, sir. Judge Joe Brown makes his ruling after this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compute your pain and suffering in a modest amount under the circumstances, and I want him to hurt. You've got 1956 proven actual. Pain and suffering would bring it up to about five. Actually, it should bring it to somewhere around nine or ten. But you'll get the jurisdictional limit because I don't want this to go on. So you get the idea through your head about this is wrong. Control yourself. You need to go have a serious talk with you. And this courtroom is now in recess. The plaintiff in this case says he was in more shock than pain after being shot with a bow and arrow. That was compounded only by amazement when the defendant tried to calm him down by choking him. The defendant did not stand a chance. Bill Pay. We'll be right back. We're back. The defendant in this case admits he was drunk and making some bad decisions on the night in question, but shooting his friend with a bow and arrow and choking him afterward is not equivalent to, say, streaking. He could have done some real damage. He'll pay. Visit our website at judgejoebrown.com.